Hey guys, we want to welcome Keith Cooper from Blurdish, a podcast that has been on the air for four years, raising up the community, highlighting and being the superhero of underrepresented creators and artists. Uh, Keith Cooper, what's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank y'all for having me. It's great to be here. So uh, we want to say thanks again, once, once again, for being on the Zach and Mac show. Uh, we are going to be partners soon at the holiday oh. gaming market. I'm yeah. really excited about that. You get to hang out with me all weekend. Oh, awesome. you he, he looks so excited. <laughs> oh no, it's actually I've been looking. I uh, the first time we did it uh, with the one of our Zendikar our Magic releases. Uh, some of the most fun I've had in a while, just because I miss having people playing together so right. much. Um, it's actually something that I look forward to, and I genuinely love the time that I'm there. So I just don't express a lot of emotion because. Uh, you're a robot. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's too busy getting his game face ready for when he breaks people. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I haven't won a game it's, in six years. Oh, that's so funny because he's like, when he breaks people, I'm like, wait, do you know who Zach is? He doesn't win. <laughs> I'm so bad. I got beat in the Thank game you. one so bad one time I had to go have back surgery. <laughs> oh, my God. No, but, but seriously, like, we're really, really happy to have you there. All I got to say is I, I will only be there one day. I think I'm going to be there Sunday. You're going to be there Friday and Saturday. You said I was going to be there all three days, but it don't matter to me, huh? I got to be there for the Hero Books event. Mm. Oh, mm. I mean, if I have the day off, then mm. I have the day off. Oh, you, no. you have to run the store. No, I want the day <laughs> off. Dude, Keith, when you, when you see the food that we have there, we have some very talented chefs that are producing food there. Um, and so we have, start off with my boy. Oh, have you, do you, do you enjoy a good milkshake, my friend? Yes. Yes, I do. So my boy, Colin, shout out to Colin. Oh, Mr. Mr. Milkshakes. Milkshakes. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Milkshake, he makes artisanal milkshakes. So just to give you an idea, this is a crazy cool milkshake, but like right off the bat, the small, it's about this big, you know, a nine ounce cup, like a good, like, you know, good cup, but it comes up to here. That's right. So because the cup stops and it keeps going There's so much sugar <laughs> I, the first one i had was a bananas foster milkshake there was two giant bananas coming out of it there was like a waffle cone thing it was like whipped cream it was like it was crazy cool and like their slogan is let's get milkshake wasted and oh my god let's get whipped milkshake wasted it's i so i think if y'all could put those in like small container cups for me like little baby cups uh, so I don't get like a uh, sugar wasted in a. Uh... <laughs> I've never ordered more than the small. No, we we'll definitely we'll definitely have the 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 litany of taste. But no, we, it's we gonna have, be lit. We're gonna have uh, Miss Milkshake. <laughs> Miss Milkshake. We're gonna have uh, Chef Christina Quackenbush. She is one of the very first Filipino chefs to introduce Filipino cuisine to the city of nice. New Orleans. And nice. She is amazing. We I have worked with her before. Yes, yeah. we have worked with her multiple times. And uh, her, her lumpia is one of the best I've ever had in my life. I've and heard I've of lumpia, out. and I heard of them through, I watch uh, the Fung Brothers on YouTube. Uh -huh. So I'm really, I've seen some of the cuisine around uh, different Asian countries. So it'd be nice to try it. Oh, man, she's coming, and she's bringing the heat, too. Like, her menu is inspired. Yeah, uh, that's gonna we, be the best part of the weekend. It's just like, it's okay, I'm gonna be there two days, so there's gonna be four <laughs> vendors, right? So I need to have both of these vendors at least four times a day. So I'm gonna gain some weight. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't 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 count calories that day. Don't count calories. It's a cheat. Day. It's a cheat weekend. So I better weekend. start working out right now. Right. <laughs> gotta, to gotta, gotta build that up in the bank See, so you're ready. Yeah. Lose weight to gain more weight. Yeah. It's how it goes. <laughs> um, but then we have uh. Uh, Frederick's artisanal breads. Oh my god! And uh, so good. Uh, Chef Frederick is from Australia. He has worked in multiple Michelin star restaurants and kitchens throughout the world. Was brought here to New Orleans pre-COVID because they wanted his talents and his knowledge to kind of up their restaurants. And then, of course, everything went sideways. Yeah. So now he is kind of got learning crazy. everything he can to take it to other places in the world. And he, he's gonna do this, um, this uh, he Louisiana gumbo dumpling. It is a dumpling made out of rice. 
and then he puts all the ingredients of a Louisiana gumbo inside. So you have a little pocket gumbo every time you eat it. I am zooming my face in because I wish it was right in front of me right now. Right? I'm like, is it going to have the blue cheese bites again? And he will have the blue cheese bites again. Those are amazing. But I'm just like, how do you think of this stuff? And he's like, you know, I want to stay honest and true to the roots of of the cuisine, but I want to break the box on it too. I'm like, that's that's impressive. That's really gumbo with no mess is definitely. I think what everyone's been asking for, but hasn't realized it. (laughs) And then finally, we have uh, Chef Gavage from Black Sheep uh, Catering. And they're gonna come oh, out. Oh, he's with, super cool. They're yeah. gonna come out with some amazing stuff too. Uh, he's just very multi-talented, different cuisines. I know he's classically French he's, trained. He's definitely the anything got, you want, man. Yeah, like, he's he got, got it. Yeah, he did Korean food last time. So good. He did a French menu uh, the second weekend. Oh yeah, and they, then, that was the fun part. So at the Rivertown, if I can interject for one yeah. second. So at the theater. They were also having a show, a production going on. So the patrons of the theater also got to try this delicious food. And um, Frederick and um, Black Goat, Black, Black Sheep. Sheep, sorry, I always say Black Goat, Black Sheep, have both been going back constantly to cook more food for just the patrons, not just our people. Like they got oh. rehired there week after week. And so like the patrons just love them. Yeah. Like they no, adore absolutely. them. I but, just want to say, yeah. there's nothing better than a Louisiana podcast when you start off talking about fine food. Honestly, right? Yeah. Because that's this where, is, our, that's this where is, our minds went immediately. This I'm is the like, mecca mm-hmm. of, of food. Like, there's, it's such a great melting pot of cultures, and it's all accepted here. And that's one of the, like, I've been very lucky to be able to travel a couple of places in my life. And, like, this is one of the places where you have just this smorgasbord of cultures that just melt together. And it's all tied to food, you know, how we bring people together with food, how, you know, uh, how cultures can, can end wars with a meal. And it, it's all, all wrapped up in that. And that is and every 100% time, Louisiana culture. Every time Max says this, I get nervous because if I ever go anywhere, I've never been anywhere but here. That's it. And so, cream milkshakes that cause anabolic shock. Yeah. <laughs> And monster milkshakes. Oh, yeah. Monster <laughs> milkshakes. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm gonna be uh I'm taking a trip soon and um if they don't have if they don't have food, like what am I gonna do without the food? Where are you where are you uh, going? Where are you going? Uh, Massachusetts. Oh man, uh you better pack. Bring some hot sauce. It's gonna be cold. <laughs> yeah. Bring some, bring some seasoning with you. I don't know. Right? That's what that's what I've been told. That's what I've yeah. been told. Because like you need uh sauce in your swag bag, man. Yeah. But uh, no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be different from what I'm told, and it's gonna be cold. Very I don't. Cold. Oh no, don't like the get cold. You, get you a you. You gonna need a John Snow blanket. You are gonna need a wrap up. Winter is coming. It's gonna be harsh. Yeah, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get one of the, astro- <laughs> the astronaut blankets, the the foil mm, wrap yeah. up in that. It's like just cook me, please. <laughs> well, so Keith, let's get to the business of this. You guys have been doing your podcast for four years now. Can you give our viewers a little taste of what it is that you guys do exactly? So what, what is Blurtish? Blurtish, uh, I guess we'll start off with the name. Um, of course, there's a couple of, it's a play on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the show Blackish. So which Blackish in itself is kind of a play on words. So it's a play on words. It's a play on words. So Blurtish, of course, blurred means black nerd. Uh, mm-hmm. Blurred ish, there's like a PG PG version is kind of a black nerd. Uh, the not so PG word version, you can figure that out. Yeah. It's just a family friendly, just black nerd ish. So that's just kind of what it is. And I just like, you know what, I want something catchy, simple. So I didn't invent the name blurred, but I was like, because a lot of you know companies put blurred, you know, who podcasts do different things. Um, so I was like, oh, what am I going to come up with? I was like, you know what? I want something that just, you just yell it out, blurtish, and it just came to be. So, you know, that's how I kind of came up with it. And I was like, oh, blackish, blurtish. Nice. Um, so with your platform, uh, with blurtish, you have been able to leverage your popularity and your reach to, to highlight new artists, creators, 
especially minority creators, excuse me, which I, I feel is, is, is a really important thing. Um, similar to how uh, with, uh, we were talking to our, our last guest, uh, Kat Blackard, mm -hmm. how she uses her uh, audio podcast to be able to um, introduce the, the non-norms into the gaming world. Uh, have you had, in your particular instance of, of, of your show, have you, have you been able to see advancements for the artists and the creators that you are 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 representing i'll say this um the i'll i'll, I'll spin it another way the artists that i serve for the most part i would say some i i think i've helped spread their work to places that they normally wouldn't be because they some of the artists have uh ties to louisiana but I have artists from California, New York, a lot from Atlanta, and a lot of people who know about Atlanta that it's full of transplants, so they're like from all over. So, you know, and it's not to insult us in Louisiana, but it's like they never think about like, oh, I should go to Louisiana for cons. You know, when people talk about cons or events, oh, it's the usual. Atlanta is like the mecca of cons right now. Then, you know, New Yorkers are, are New Yorkers, you know, they they're the, the center of the they're, yeah but but they have you know big, these massive big cons and you know wizard world you know it's not always on the list of things as a since it's a tour even though it is kind of like a mid-sized big con and make con is big dust but you know it just helps get their work out to very people to you know something as simple as and i get this a lot especially from create you know people who come check out the table of all races are like, I didn't know there was that many black comic book creators. The answer is yes. And it's been doing it. We've been doing it for years. Like, you know, and I mean, literally for years, um, you can go all the way back to um, my mind's going blank, but she's actually like a famous cartoonist. <sighs> it just blank, but you know, she actually is like one of the first black women who had a cartoon strip, like, way back in the day, like we're talking like maybe 50s, 60s, probably 50s. And it was a big deal. And my mind blanked and I'm mad at that. So, but <laughs> you know, people have been writing for years. So it's like, yeah, you know, if, if there have been black writers, then there have been always been black artists. So mm -hmm. comic, a comic book is part writing and part art. So it's always been done. So it's just another way to fill in the gaps because Everybody can't get in the store. And right. let's face it, you all have your, your distribution of people that you have to order from or different things. Everybody knows in the comic book world, Diamond is evil. <laughs> They're just there. And regardless of if you, have, if you have a store, unless they create the owners of the store like yourself, go out, the way, out their way to make a space for independent creatives and, you know, all they're going to do is do what Diamond tells them to do or what they think is selling that way. But, you know, people who own a store can make a space, even if it's just a small table. But I kind of have made that my whole thing. And I guess I'm a cross-reference one artist. Uh, his name is Jason Reeves. He was the guy who he was the first person to come up to me and be like, hey, would you sell my comic book? And I'm going to take it back a little bit further how that happened. Like, there's a really long story to this, but I'm going to make this simple. Like, how one thing really leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. Um, I work, I'm actually, I work at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. By the way, that's my full-time job. So, uh, because Black Panther was coming out, Black Panther was kind of like a good shift to make things public to people who didn't know that, Oh, who's this black comic book superhero? Okay. Then it was like a lot of artists like, okay, it's our time to shine. We can make, you know, raise our profile and get people to know that, hey, we do exist. We work for Marvel. We work for DC. We have our own companies. We work for Image. We've done all these things. We've done zines. We've done podcasts. We've done all this nerdy stuff, this artistic stuff. It is there for you to find it. So... First, uh, we made a uh, comic book con 
I was I'm a part of the committee. Shout out to my committee if you see it. See this. Um, and the theme was um, "Welcome to Wakanda." So one of my one of the people that I just reached out to, like you know, long story short, he did my podcast. He loved it. He's actually from New Orleans. Jason Reeves of One Three Three Art lives in Los Angeles, due, unfortunately due to Katrina. And then he came down, had a great time at the at the con. And then he just like, hey, want to sell my book? And I literally said, this is what I said. Are you sure? I'm like, you really <laughs> want me to sell your book? Like, people are going to buy comics. I'm like, eh, you know, I read them. I'm like, you know, I'm like, are you sure, man? I'm like, I'm just going to like, you know, do a pop-up with comic books. I said, and I literally said, I was like, well, since he's his own printer, I said, since you have him, eh, I'll give it a shot. And I've been doing the selling part for three years straight. So that oh, just shows wow. how that worked out. So, so I went from my podcast has led into me becoming a store. Um, I am eventually going to become my own comic book creator, like a little goofy hybrid. We'll get into that later. I know when we talk about stuff I'm working on. But so one thing leads to another. And then the podcast itself kind of just leads to other people like um i've actually had the most uh i don't know if you ever heard of larry stroman uh he is actually the most selling independent creator of a comic book i think of one of maybe one series or issue um he was with image kind of in closer to the beginning mm -hmm. uh it's called tribe and he's been on the show and like, this man here has basically made probably millions off of being an artist mm -hmm. and he just hit me up one time he's like he's like you know what i'm thinking about getting myself back out there on social media i was like all right how are you doing he was like you have a podcast right i'm like yes he was like can i be on it i'm like like larry stroman you want to be on my show i'm like sure <laughs> <laughs> like, let's do this and we had a good time and um you know we we had you know people who are up and coming we have successful people that people like the Tuskegee Airs, which uh, before the show's talking about, like one of the hottest independent comics, comic books going on. And he has some Louisiana ties. Uh, shout out to Greg Burnham. He actually went to school uh, at Grandma University. Um, I'm a Jaguar, so we always tease each other. We always go at it <clears throat> a little bit. <laughs> so you just, it's, it's, I guess, seeing the moment, seeing where you can get visibility to bring consciousness to people. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the, doing the table, it's, it's beautiful when you see people like eyes light up and they see it and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know this exists. And like I say, people of all races see that and like, I like this because I actually have a lot of books that have a lot of women creators and women leads, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all type of uh, things going on. So, and it just, it's not necessarily planned. I don't like, I will get this one book. I did say that for one book and it took me a year to get it. And it's become like the hottest selling book I have. And it's called Harry Tubman Demon Slayer. And lo and behold, and to show you how things are created, we actually interviewed that person like long time, like early, early on. And we was like, man, we'll love to have your book. And you know, he just had a lot of different deals going on. So Jason Reeves, who is a printer and who actually does print jobs for other people, he wind up getting, I guess, the deal of the contract. So now he just ships me the book and I sell it. So I eventually did get it that way. So a lot of, it's like, you kind of have sometimes a close circle, you know, in the, I guess, in the diverse, you know, black comic book community. So it's it, it sometimes it feels like you know are you the only one out there or maybe some creators feel that way but then sometimes you be in the groups you see people you you know people get to know each other just by beating other people and doing podcasts or talking doing cons and then it's less like you know it becomes like a big family reunion like you know you know I might be the strange cousin off to the side who's you know <laughs> hustling or something but that's okay <laughs> you know I'm I'm in the building but. It's just, um, you know, it, it's a lot of connectivity. So you just never know. And you, and if you, you know, I guess if you give advice to any creator, wherever you start at, just keep pushing, 
you know, look for your tribe, look for people who might be similar and just look for anybody who wants to, to like your work and mm -hmm. look for some, uh, for, for positive positivity. Oh, that's awesome. So, so I, I do have a, a, a kind of similar thing. Uh, one of the things that, uh, like Zach and I were talking about earlier, uh, we there are very few black game designers in our industry, but the ones that we do have are wildly successful. Like Eric Lang is one of the absolute ones. legend, a legend in <laughs> in our our industry. He is produced legend in my heart. He's produced um, Cthulhu Death May Die, mm -hmm. which is one of our hot sellers. That's He's produced, my personal favorite board game. Uh, Dice Masters, which is another super did seller. Did he make Quarriors too? He That's did make Quarriors. Quarriors was um, a, mm, gotta love that game. Uh, I mean, Dice Masters picked up the WWE, you know, as part of their product line. Uh, I mean, he has produced hit after hit after hit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was looking at the background of where he pointed, and the WWE was white, so I didn't pick up. But I'm like, what are you pointing to? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but but no, like like Eric Lang, a fantastic designer. Um, then oh, you have Letitia Williams. Liked, uh, our component, all that good stuff. Yeah, he was part of all that stuff. Yeah, he was no, part of I all of that. Everyone who's watching this, well. Not everyone, but like on the live show knows that I have an obsession. So yes. I wanted to mention it. <laughs> Needed to mention it. So. Um, but no, like similarly, we have Leticia Williams and we have uh, Jay Bobo. Mm -hmm. They both produce, uh, co-produced uh, and designed the game, uh, what is it called? Uh, Black Card Revoked, which is actually now a game show yes. on BET. I actually want to play that with somebody. Like I've heard people play. I, that's one I was thinking in my mind, like, I always wanted to play that because I'd probably be more into party party games party like game. that. I actually played, wound up playing, uh, shout out to Ninja Yo-Yo and her husband, Daniel. Um, they invited me to play like the anime version of it. It uh -huh. was called what, Asian Flush. I, I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> Asian Flush, yeah. Funny. It is actually called Asian like, Flush, yeah. Um, but like, no. <laughs> when, I, when I went out like, because Daniel is uh, part Korean, I like Daniel. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like it was like always like anime stuff and like it's like uh -huh. Cards Against Humanity, which I never played, but I was like I picked up on it quick. And we also taught yeah. him how to play Uno that night too, as well, which was funny. Oh All my right, god! So wait, side side note, side note. Do you, you house rule your Uno game? Because Hell some of yeah, it here have some, my, like if you're not house ruling rule <laughs> your Uno game. <laughs> You're not doing it right. Yes, stacking is real. Yeah, stacking is real. First one, cards, and you deal with the punishment. And no, we don't. And I even like it where we, you know. And I'm gentle. You don't have to play till you match, pull till you match, pull one. That makes more fun. But stacking, yes. <laughs> my favorite, um, my favorite must be stacked. Are the ones that my goddaughter makes. She's seven, and there's no like particular set. It doesn't like, you know, like it's not preordained. It's just as the game continues, it's essentially this is the rule now. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. It's like <laughs> this plus two means you draw 20. I'm like, okay, okay, Isabel, I understand. Just letting you know his goddaughter is like the age of what? Seven. She's seven. seven. Yeah. Just your just goddaughter, like, your goddaughter gets it because while we were playing Uno, we started adding drunk rules to it. Uh, and I it's like it. if you do the the if you play a change a blank or whatever change the color you get to make a rule when you play that card and it was like you got to maybe like start drinking every time you use a word with a vowel or something and oh, it's no. like when somebody changes the rule I'm dead or, or, or do dead. something like that or i'm already you dead know, or you get or until somebody changed change the draw for or the color uh -huh. that rule stays in place until another I think it's, I forgot what it is. I'll, I'll have to look at the card, but that's what the, that was the house rules stacked onto that. So, yes, it was why, and thank God it wasn't anything else. I would have been right. messed up. <laughs> but, but, like, once again, like, that, that's a thing in our industry. We, we don't have a lot of, of representation as far as designers um, in our industry. And that's one of the things that I think is very cool about the Blurish podcast is that you guys are making a space you're making yes. noise yes. for those creators and that type of content so people can actually see that hey look that talent is there and that's why i think it's so important to have this type of, of discussion I'm, 
Eric oh, Lang has produced so many big games in our industry. And like when I, when we were talking earlier, you know, uh, Zach was like, he made that game and he made that. I love that game, you know? And, and that's, that is the light bulb that you were talking about. It's like, wow, these producers, these content providers have been there always. And I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hit you with a person's name over the head. That's from Louisiana. And he happens to be African-American. Uh, that's how I felt about learning about Rob Guillory out of Lafayette. Like, you know, and I'm not just name dropping him because he's he's made it. I actually love his stuff. Like I never I never read Chew yet, but mm -hmm. the, the lady who did my website, she's a big Rob Guillory fan. She's out of Lafayette. Shout out to Get Rec Tech. Hello, Leslie. Uh she did my <laughs> website. <laughs> Hi Leslie. Hi Leslie. <laughs> but she did my website. So she she always loved Chew. I was like, okay, you know. I didn't know how big he was, and Mark, like, you know, shout out to Mark, my, my co-host, and uh, he was like, do you not understand? He was like, he's, like, award-winning, so I read it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I was just like, okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, well, but, he's such a, but he's such a good dude, but he's such a chill, low-key, mm -hmm. humble guy, but I love farmhand, like, and I start seeing how people reacted to him, and he's just, like, this unassuming, cool, chill guy. But people, like, his fans love him, right? And he's an Eisner Award-winning artist. But I've been reading Farmhand, and it's like, which um, I think is going to come to AMC as a TV show eventually. Oh. There, there, okay. Of course, COVID probably slowed right. everything down. Everything delayed. But I'm it's just... like, this became the hit, and it's a story based in Lafayette, Louisiana. And it's like, and we had him on. We actually went to his studio to do it and just that was one of the highlights so it's just like you know they got people right in the state you know people of diverse backgrounds who have made it and you know rob is just one of those folks i mean you know go to the website and listen to the, the podcast for inspiration wink wink and hear what he you know did but of course you know that's that's the joy of finding this stuff out and you know mark knows his artists inside and out and uh you know, he'll tell you in a book like this art and, and compare it to this. And, you know, I kind of just give my opinion, like, you know, I love art and I'll just come up with a comparison to something that I can relate to. So I don't try to get all super technical because I'm not an artist. I'm not like that. And, and, and then I think sometimes the general layman who don't know these things like myself, you just want to enjoy it and you just want to be like, this is dope. Sometimes you gotta say, I don't know what this is, but God damn it, I love it. <laughs> you know, like, so that's just kind of how I approach it. And it's just, you know, why not have that approach to art that you can relate to? And, you know, I love superheroes, but it's cool to give art that isn't say dudes in spandex flying around where you can have, you know, a demonic plant you know, possessed lady out in Lafayette, you know, killing people, you know, farmhand <laughs> again, you know, just stuff like that, or, you know, or reimagine, you know, a, a woman who was a badass in real life, Harriet Tubman, as an even bigger badass, badass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, you know, with katana yeah. blades. So, yeah. and even to make space for something like, you know, for Jason Reed's book, he has like his Kid Carver's books, which shows twin geniuses on the West Bank of New Orleans who wear little lab coats, but they're fly and they're smart. So my table kind of reflects all of that. And it's good to have these things. And it's cool to talk with people about this because the stories can become endless. You know, it becomes limitless. And it's just like anything else that, you know, Stan Lee or Jack Kirby was doing. You know, it's just we're telling our stories in, in our way, in our fashion. And they're, they're, they're the new legends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always going to be the same old, you know, Superman story. Honestly, I'm not a big Superman fan outside of the animated stories because I find them boring because it's like, don't oh, you tell you do too? Don't tell no one else to. <laughs> you know, wrong. Like, I would never like any, try to like say anything bad about any writers. It's just not my favorite guy. I, I mean, I, yeah, I just I like the character itself does not, not drive me. Yeah, he doesn't. I've never been driven to learn more about him. That's yeah, 
But but then when you watch Dwayne Duffy, who uh, was, of course, a part of um, Milestone, what he did with Justice League Unlimited, he actually made Superman interesting. And he kind of had that stoic cap, like, you know how people got to know Captain America through these Marvel movies, and he's like, he's this Boy Scout, but he, he you know, he burns with passion about what, what happened in his life. But Superman was really deep in, in, in animated shows. I, I don't watch read the book but they they nailed it in the animated series which is oh, strange no, because absolutely. i mean like for me the 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 big phone for superman i would say would be all-star all-star superman one of yeah. the best the but best stories hands if you down go back and watch all the justice league unlimited those shows are like top tier and it's due to a black creator mm -hmm. who who really helped who started out as his own independent comic book creator so oh, yeah. people you know having diverse voices and leadership and different things can lead to a wonderful um wonderful art absolutely absolutely and like once again the same thing with the game design you know uh with, within our business uh I, I i talk about i gush over eric lang solely because he is so prolific in our store mm -hmm. we carry almost every, every single title he makes, he makes. Yeah. um uh we don't have a fan club <laughs> uh, Cthulhu Death May Die was one of our hottest sellers for this year. We I would say sold so, so much of that product. I have to say it's still like I tell everyone this to come in. I think it still holds true. I have the numbers I can check, but uh, it came out. It came to our store in May, mm -hmm. and it is the most sold board game we've had. Like I'm talking about like one title compared to every other one for the whole year. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because he he got the feel of of the tension and the of thing trying is, to stop a world-ending event in a board game. Oh yeah, and they also, um, so like six months down the line, it's like, oh yeah, you sold a bunch of them. And that was also the case two months down the line. Mm -hmm. like three, like it was just immediately, we got the first allocation in, which was like six six boxes, six games, gone. Mm -hmm. Second box, gone, gone. Yeah, and 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 that's one of the things that I, I think is just like, like you were saying, it's like you didn't know that Robert Guidry was this local guy you know who's a black creator and you're like man i just love his stuff it's just really cool and then when the light bulb hit you're like oh damn oh heck yeah he, like he's yeah. awesome like, yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's like no wonder i get it now and mm -hmm. but and then to you know i'll sell some of his books sometimes you know when i can any which way i get them first of all he's terrible about social media like he pops up but then when if he says all right, I'll see y'all maybe next year or something. It's like, you know how long it took. You, you know how long it yeah. took to get the interview with him. It took a year. It took a year. I literally, I like, I'm gonna send. I told my friend Leslie, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna send Rob Giller an email, and lo and behold, eventually he did answer. And he's yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry it took me forever, but you know, I was like, I was just out being, you know, awesome creating, you know, yeah. award winning comic books like. Not that he said that, but it's like, you know, like thing, right? yeah. 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 he's like, oh yeah, I'm just working on my new my new stuff, farmhand, and here I am locked. Like I can't wait for the new episode. Yeah. So, so Keith, um, uh, last kind of big question for you is like, what what are you what are you guys doing now? What what are you working on? Is there anything that we should let our fans know, uh, let our audience know, and of course, you know what's important to you? I want you to let me know. <laughs> Always, sir. But uh. I guess more podcasts, of course. Um, we got one coming up. We just, I actually, on Veterans Day, I went to see uh, some friends of mine, uh, the Yokai Den. Um, they're actually uh, uh, a husband and wife team who served in the Army, but they're big anime nuts, weebs, if you will, or <laughs> I don't know if I can say weeaboos, but otakus. But, you know, I'm messing around, but... But, you know, they are serious, and I went and interviewed them, so that was fun, so that's coming up. But, I, you know, shout out to them. Um, and I, like, I, I just want to give a shout out to some other uh, store creatives. Uh, shout out to uh, Anubis Games in Lafayette, uh, Darnell. They are Simon. fantastic. Daquan? Uh, Anubis? Yeah, but uh, the uh, owner is uh, Daquan, right? Uh, Darnell Sanye. Don, oh, sorry. Darnell. Him, I, I met him and his mm -hmm. wife at uh yeah. at gamma they are such a sweet sweet wonderful people wonderful so people. nice yeah. yes 
Yes. And I, they, they let me do, they was like, hey, if you want to do a pop-up anytime you want, I kind of passed through. He grabbed some stuff from me. Um, I was, a, I, I, I slapped myself on the wrist. I did a terrible job because I was just exhausted. I'm like, I'm going to have to come back and do a real one. But like, I just wanted to come visit him because he moved within to the city more, part, more of the city of Lafayette. He was like on the fringes of Scott where if you've gone through Lafayette, through the traffic, through the airport, it is a terrible drive. Like it fools you like, oh, it's going to be nice. No, it's not nice. It's terrible on the other side. But, you know, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to uh, DJ Young Venom. Philip DJ Young Venom, he has a long name. He's out in Jackson, Mississippi, one of the best stores I've ever been to. Um, he might have been the first black comic book store owner I've met. Um, and we're like the same about age. He's a little bit younger than me. I mean, it's like pretty much a culture store, you mm -hmm. know, you know, to use those fancy terms like as they use on the East Coast. I like that's what East Coast people, but it's just, you know, it's literally a meeting spot. It's a comic book store. It's a designer toy shop. It's an art gallery. He sells clothes and stuff and, and vinyl all in this older, you know, space. So, and he's, I think he might sell games if he wanted to. So, and oh, you have, have concerts there as well too. So it's like an event space at night. Before COVID, you know. So, uh, where, where, uh, where, and what was the store called? I missed it. Uh, that is Offbeat in uh, Jackson. So, shout out to them. Okay. And That's he's also a podcaster. And uh, shout out to Gamma Ray is his host. Uh, she's a great cosplayer. She was uh recent. We we we've done some uh podcasts this year. She actually was on the Comic Con for the uh, Mid City Micro Con in Baton Rouge. She was one of the hosts, one of the judges. Um, uh, for for that con, and I suggested her, and you know we're probably one of the first cons you can see locally that it had two black women judges for a cosplay, and her and you know Ninja Yo Yo. So I was in instrumental in helping with that. Uh, so I'd like to just give I always like to give shout out to the actual store brick and mortars because I'm I'm this crazy dude. I'm like with a pop up. I'm everywhere. People have li like literally told me like. You know, one thing about Blur is like, man, you're everywhere around the city. Like, you're like, it, it's getting strange. Like, it feels weird. Like, you know, I'll, I'll go to all parts of Baton Rouge. I'll go to Scotlandville. Like, I grew up in Baker. Um, if anybody knows that, that's North Baton Rouge, kind of the country a little bit. It's uh, past Southern University. You know, I did, uh, it was this event called Scotlandville Sundays, um, you know, right in the historic town, part of Baton Rouge, right there where Southern University is at. And this this couple or this this family was like, didn't I see you at Wizard World? I'm like, yeah, I was there, and you here too. I'm like, I'm here too. <laughs> then this couple saw me at the the Mid City Makers Market that I do monthly. It was like, oh hey, it's you. I'm like, yeah, it's me. It's like I'm just kind of like that dude. I just pop up I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, it's like they're like, what books you got? I'm like, come on in. So I try to bounce around different parts of the city because that's important to you know to actually bring the art to um diverse areas where there isn't a comic book store like growing up in baker you know i tell the story many times you know the kids who like i kind of laugh at the kids it's like i got picked on for liking nerdy stuff y'all i didn't have sidewalks where i grew up at so when i got to go to winn dixie to read comics it was like my escape out into the world. Like, it was fun. I got to read Game Pro Magazine and see all this art and all this stuff. And it was like, I'm just sitting there absorbing it. Like, you know, and a lot of people take that for granted. Like, those are things that every, rural, especially if you're in a rural part of the, of the world or you just don't have nothing by you, you don't get to get picked on about these things. You know, you don't have these things other than like the standard video games and stuff. You know, and a lot of us try to do it through art. Like, we'll go to school and draw Sonic and Tails and stuff like that. And, you know, even, like, the hardest of dudes who, like, you know, will appreciate art. You know, dudes who just, you know, you know, you, you know you're in middle school. He's, like, 17, you know, and they'll be like, oh, man, that's good art. You know, they'll, they will, people will respect that. People right. actually, no matter what their background have a respect for art. And that has always been true. And people love Street Fighter, and people love fighting games, people love seeing people get crap kicked at each other. So yeah. 
I mean, that goes in with pop culture and different stuff. So, uh, basically, you know, working on podcasts, um, promoting people. I've, you know, done a new pod pop-up. Uh, shout out to Beausoleil Books in Lafayette again. I go to Lafayette a lot. Also, but shout out to one of my favorite places that I started setting up at French Truck Coffee. They're in New Orleans. They're in Baton Rouge. They're in Memphis. They've been so kind. Um, shout out to them. Uh, shout out to Simple Joe's. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to shout out everybody, but I like to just give respect to people who have helped into what I do. And, right. you know, I've been able, I, I'm blessed to say that I can go any Friday, Saturday, Sunday that I'm off, I can find a place to go sell a comic book and go figure in Baton Rouge, Louisiana of all places. Mm-hmm. You know, how many people can say that? Right. You know, so I'm always doing pop-ups, more podcasts. I will be doing your event soon. Yeah. And yeah. in the long run, we're working on our own comic book, um, kind of based off of our podcast experiences. Because believe it or not, we've had some strange experiences. I've actually had some people try to steal the name Blurtish or do some weird stuff with it. I, I don't know why. Well, I know why, but, you know, when you have these conversations with the person who's messing with you, whatever. So, and just other weirdos. So some, sometimes things, I'm going to say, get competitive or people just like, you know, you're doing something right when people are jacking around with your idea. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Let's make a comic book where we exaggerate kind of me and Mark as a podcast duo. And we're kind of fighting off our haters. So it's going to be kind of us versus uh, the organization of NAH. <laughs> and I want y'all to take a crack at, guess what N-A- N-A-H stand for? Uh, and it's PG, so it ain't nothing crazy, but, you know. You said N-A-H? N-A-H. We're fighting nah. against the forces of NAH. NAH. Oh, man. North American haters. You got one word right. Haters. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> We're fighting against nefarious, annoying haters. Ah, fair. So, I was You're like, right. You should be open to going to other continents. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. You know what? I'm just going to make a book for, for the people. And it's not just That's awesome. our experiences, That's but it's great. also for everybody who's been downplayed, who has to deal with you know, the know-it-alls. Like, you know, I, I guess I'm into nerdy stuff, but I don't pretend I know everything. Like, you can't, come on, have, have y'all met the guys who just, I know all the, all the card games. I'm the best. I'm the legend. Oh, it's you. It's not me. No, it's not me. What are you talking about? Don't look at me that way. You talk anything about comics. Nah, this is... Nah. Yeah. All right, I, I, I specifically... I know a lot about Marvel comics, and that's about it. Yeah, you know what I know? Captain America is a wuss. I will beat you to death. <laughs> <laughs> so like, gonna our char- one of our characters is going to be like, um, actually, and that would be like the name. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That's me. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's me. me. Mag. That's, that's Mag. 100% oh me. That's me. Because he will literally say it. He'll be standing right over actually. there by the counter. No, no, no. He won't even say actually. He'll turn around on a dime. Um, actually? I'm like, Mac, I'm, so this is a me conversation. Get out. <laughs> and um, and uh, we're going to have one of the guys that we sell for, David Gordon, is going to be like the main artist. But we also got people who just, it's going to be like a, it's going to be a weird hybrid. It's going to be like a coloring book. Um, just because color, book, comic books, believe it or not, y'all, expensive no, that's no, a no. secret so he was like hey man i love that y'all sell for me he's like i'll cut you a little bit of a deal somewhat he was like but let's make it black and white and he's like you need to get to this page count and so he's like hey just ask some artists if they would donate some pinups and stuff we're going to do some story with it and we're going to do like some pinups so it's going to be like it's not going to be smooth at all folks it's going to be weird you know, it's going to be black and white, you know, it's going to be family friendly enough, but we want to do, get, we want to get some points across and hopefully people will see or recognize some of the villains that we, we come across. Even one will be like this, uh, uh, I forgot his name or I, I have to go back and look, but he's going to be like an evil video gamer. 
we actually gave him like a PlayStation controller for his belt buckle. Uh, he has like one up, like he has like the glasses, like he looks like a typical, you know, video game, YouTube hype beast gone wrong. So it's just going to be like, like just, just toxic gamer, like GG easy yes. or like the, well, you see, sir. <laughs> oh, no, no, he's going to be a toxic gamer. He's oh, an air. Oh, played with some of those last night. I got hit with the <laughs> GG easy. I'm like, leave me alone. Stop. Oh, no, this dude is not. Look, he had like one of his tattoos might say flex. You know, <laughs> he's just going to be that guy. So we just wanted to have fun with it. Like, you know, it was like, you know what? Why not have fun? You know, laugh, laugh at some of the people who laugh at us, mm -hmm. laugh back and just make something of it. And maybe people get a good message out of it. So that is hopefully something we get out next year. It got a little delayed just because uh, just writing. And when you're writing and as an indie, and you're trying to sell stuff as well, too. You just right. get exhausted. So it's like I wear many hats, podcasting, salesman, writer. You know, I, I finally accepted the writer term. I don't feel like I deserve the writer term because I'm just making up some goofy stuff. But what's so, so cool That's is, where the best stories come from is the goofy stuff. So absolutely. Like, and yeah. My creator yeah. friends are like, hey, man, you're a writer. Yeah. It's like, you know, if you write something and people buy it, you're right. Hey. Well, Keith Cooper, once again, we want to say thank you so much for being on our show. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your time, uh, out of your day and, and, and kind of chatting with us. Um, we would like to make sure that all of our viewers check out Keith and his partner's uh, podcast. And that uh, web address will be here. Somewhere in here and then of you course you make him look like an idiot put it over there <laughs> don't make me look like an idiot again and then of course don't forget please check out blurtish at the holiday gamer market it'll be at the rivertown yes. Kenner theater the address will be here put it over his face like a sensor right bar here uh but he <laughs> and his partner will hang out with us over at the rivertown Kenner theater we're gonna have a good time we're going to get milkshake sugar drunk, wasted. milkshake wasted. Uh, we're going to eat some really fine foods. And you know what? I'm going to see if we can get a copy of uh, either Asian Flush or... Um, uh, yes. Your, yes. Uh, I mean, you can get a copy of Asian Flush. Or uh, I don't want that video, man. Uh, <laughs> or Black Card Revoked. And let's see if maybe we can do a video of us playing against the guys from Blurters. And that'd be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. So... Well, and also Shout out to Lazy Nerd. Uh, Lazy Nerd Designs will be joining me. Like uh, He's another otaku gamer, Twitch affiliate. Check him out. Um, we've been table mates. You may not see Mark. Um, I might have to put Mark on video. Um, and just shout out to my friend. He got actually, he did contract COVID early this year. He beat it. Um, you know, so he might not be so open to some spots. So it just depends. But, but no, you know, once again, Keith, thank you so much for being on our show. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do it. And uh, we're looking forward to meeting you in person at the uh, Holiday Gaming Market. So thank you. Yeah, what are we, uh, two weeks out? Two yeah, weeks two out. Weeks December out. 4th, 5th, and 6th. Like, comment, uh, subscribe. 4th, 5th, 6th. of course, what is it, Zach? Mark your calendars. No. What? The ring the... Don't forget to ring that bell. <laughs> ring, ring the calendars bell. Like it. Thank Actually. you, brother. We really appreciate you being on. Thank you. Mm -hmm.